Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in today's video, I would like to show you and explain you different ways you can aggregate content from various SharePoint sites. Let me first explain to you what I'm talking about. So as you create, uh, you know, different sites uh, in your SharePoint environment, you often have a need to aggregate content. Maybe you want to aggregate some news and announcements. Maybe you want to aggregate some documents and so on. So here's a use case. I have this uh, internet hub and I have all these different sites and each site has its own, you know, news widget, maybe a, a document library with documents and so on. All right, so, and I have all these different sites and as you can see, news, events, you know, documents and so on. Uh, how do we aggregate some of this content on one site? Uh, let me first tell you what we can aggregate, okay, and what we can roll up. Uh, there is not a lot, all right? <laughs> we can aggregate news from the, all the different news widgets, you know, news web parts on different sites. We can aggregate events. So if you have a calendar on different sites, all right, we can aggregate events and uh, show them all on one site. And the final thing, we can aggregate uh, documents, all right? We can aggregate documents. So if you have some documents, let's say on this site and then another site, and we can aggregate them all uh, on some third site. Uh, let me show you each of these methods. Now, um, there are limitations, all right? There are pros and cons, there are limitations for each method. So uh, I'll make sure to mention those, but uh, let's start with news. All right, so here, here's the situation. I have this hub, you know, it's a hub site and I want to aggregate news from all these different department sites. So let me click the, click the edit button. Uh, now, at the moment, uh, I'm pretty much publishing the news right on the site, but what I can say is that, hey, I want uh, to aggregate news from all these different sites. And as you can see, it will aggregate them from all, all these different sites I have, or I can be very specific. I can say, you know what, we only trust uh, HR and accounting and so on. We can pretty much uh, just uh, roll up a news, uh, news post from, uh, you know, the selected sites. So these are the different selections available. Let me uh, change it back, all right, uh, to how it used to be. So uh, the second piece of content we can aggregate, uh, uh, you know, uh, our new uh, events from different calendars. And it kind of works the same way as you can see uh, by at the moment, I'm just publishing events right on this site. And uh, I can also, you know, also say, you know what, you know, all the sites on the hub, select sites, or so all sites in my tenant. So I can pretty much uh, display all of these different events I have in this widget. Again, could be really beneficial if every department publishes some events and you just want to show them all on one, in one big, you know, calendar. The third uh, type of content you can aggregate, and that's the one that is kind of limited, all right? It, it's kind of limited in terms of, uh, you know, the layout and possibilities. If you want to roll up and aggregate documents, uh, you have to use uh, the highlighted content web part or HCWP as we call it, all right? And here it is. Now, here is the thing about this web part. The way it works, all right, so, uh, remember how you have all these different libraries, document libraries on each and every site? Uh, and uh, if you want to aggregate content from these libraries, they're not going to magically appear in a library, you know, on the site. Uh, the way uh, this web part works, it's more of a query, all right? So it queries the information and just rolls it up over here. So, um, for example, again, I'm rolling up documents from all the sites in the hub. Again, you can kind of specify either all sites or select sites. Let's leave it alone. And we are aggregating documents. And I mean, if you know what you're doing, you can actually specify if you are utilizing metadata, you can query maybe specific document type or uh, whatever metadata you use. But in, in our case, let's just keep it simple. You know what? I just want all the Word documents, all right? Just like that. Now, what you see is what you get in terms of content, uh, in terms of layout and presentation. I mean, um, you know, there are not that many choices. Um, you can pretty much, again, it's not going to appear like it, it is in a document library. It's going to be like more a list of documents that it finds via the query, right? And then you just have all these different styles in terms of presentations. Again, not too many choices. What you see is what you get, and that's just how it's going to look like. 
Uh, so in my opinion, it's a bit limited, but it still might be useful if you want to ro roll up documents from multiple sites. All right. Uh, but these are the three methods, and really there are no more, you know, there are no kind of significant additional, you know, types of documents uh, or types of content, I should say, uh, you can roll up. Uh, what you see is what you get uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of kind of the uh, presentation and the ability to uh, roll up uh, content. Uh, so uh, in the description of this uh, video, uh, I will also include a related uh, article that I wrote on my blog, so you can check it out and uh, check out additional kind of uh, possibilities and limitations. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching this video. As always, uh, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.